the search for life beyond Earth has taken humanity on a thrilling journey through the cosmos over the years. And now we've got a new address on our interstellar map, Jupiter's icy moon, Europa. NASA is now headed there with its largest ever planetary mission ever, the Europa Clipper. And the reason NASA is now taking this 2.9 billion kilometer journey is because of how promising Europa is, given that it might just have the right ingredients for an alien life. And where there's water, there could be life as well. It is going to be a long and a lonely journey to this promising place. Europa orbits within one of the harshest environments in the solar system, right in Jupiter's massive radiation belt. And this, viewers, isn't just science fiction anymore. This is actually happening. A spacecraft that has been built by thousands of brilliant minds from around the world will now slingshot around Mars and Earth to reach Europa by 2030. And when it arrives, the discoveries it will make could change everything we know about the universe. So clearly, very exciting days ahead as far as the hunt for alien life is concerned. Joining us on the broadcast are our guests for the show, Dr. James Lloyd, who is a research fellow at the School of Molecular Sciences, the University of Western Australia, and also uh, Jijit Nadumuri Ravi, who is a former scientist at ISRO, who was also part, in fact, of many GSLV launches and the Chandrayaan-1 study phase. Dr. James, I'll start with you now. Alien life, interplanetary mission, a mysterious ocean world. The Europa Clipper mission already seems like something out of a sci-fi movie. It really does. And when you think about it, any of the life that could exist as we know it must be many kilometers deep under the icy uh, crust that uh, is around the moon. And you have maybe a hundred kilometer deep ocean below that, but it's going to be pitch black. And so the life that exists there is going to be very different from any of the green photosynthetic life we know here on Earth. And so it's going to be wildly different. And this is if there is any life, which I'm hopeful, but of course we've got a long way to even get signs of life uh, because it'll take another five and a half years for the mission to even get there. Absolutely. And also, uh, Mr. Jijit Nadumuri, I mean, the Chandran project that you worked on detected water on the moon and it also made headlines about how there could be traces of life as well there. Here, in this case, we are talking about an entire massive ocean world. So the possibilities here are just impressive. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a very exciting kind of a mission because uh, uh, we already know from the previous mission that there is uh, water vapor plumes uh, that is the, uh, detected on the surface of Europa. So there is a high possibility of water, uh, liquid water uh, that is not on the surface, but a uh, little bit uh, inside in the uh, icy crust. So where there is water, there is a possibility of uh, microbial lives like bacterial life, etc. So that's what exciting. That is what uh, uh, every uh, every uh, person of the scientific community is uh, very interestingly looking at. And of course, uh, the mission is uh, a very long journey. It's a five-year kind of, but there is a kind of a complementary lander. That is what I understand. So it will be a flyby mission. And if there is a kind of uh, more signatures of uh, uh, like microbial presence or even a kind of a thermal signature, uh, then uh, there is a possibility of landing. But of course, it's a primarily a flyby mission, which is a kind of an initial probe. But it's exacting, uh, uh, exactly uh, very interesting to know the more in more details when the spacecraft reach there and make the first flyby. And there are uh, around nine instruments uh, which can uh, probably de detect different parameters uh, that is uh, uh, related to life and uh, or, or related to the liquid water in the form of, or water vapor in the form of plumes. Right. Also, Dr. James, if you can just help our viewers understand what makes Europa so special. There are so many bodies across uh, our solar system. And of course, I understand there is a need to narrow down that search as well. We can't go around looking everywhere in the solar system. What exactly makes Europa so special compared to other moons or planets when it comes to the search for life? So, in addition to this evidence of liquid water, we know, as we've just heard, about these plumes. And so think of them as ice volcanoes. And so the reason we think we've even got liquid water that far out in the solar system, so far away from the heat of the sun, is that the mass 
the gravity of Jupiter causes the moon to flex, and so you get friction and you get heating from that. And occasionally you seem to have these explosions of these ice volcanoes, and you're seeing water plumes up to maybe 200 kilometers high. And so that means that that water that's deep down where the life may be is sometimes being exposed. And so if this uh, mission can actually fly through one of those plumes, it has equipment that can actually sense what dust and water and gases are emitted in these plumes and look for potential signs of life, things like organic compounds that would be indicative of you know, living matter. So we may not be able to prove life with this mission, but we'll be able to map the surface and get a much better idea of where there might be good places to look if we did want to return in the future and maybe find really good signs of life from these explosive uh, ice volcanoes and directly fly through them. Absolutely. The fact that we're actually talking here, sitting about uh, the possibility of our space probes actually flying through ice volcanoes billions of kilometers away just blows my mind. Jijit, what kind of signs are we looking at here? Because uh, James here spoke of how important it is for us to look at water and how could that be an indicator as well. But what other signs are we looking at here? I mean, all right, we will pass through the ice uh, volcanoes and the water and everything. What happens next? What are the signs that will tell us that, okay, there seems to be some sort of an alien life here? Yeah, yes. So the primary signature is water vapor itself, uh, the, the H2O, the presence of H2O. But we are also having a lot of scientific instruments like, which will study the geological activity that's going on in the uh, this moon. And uh, there is some uh, thermal imaging system to study the surface texture, and it can detect the warmer, uh, war warmer areas versus the colder areas. So the life is more to be uh, expected in the warmer areas. And there are spectrometers, uh, which will be looking at the chemistry of the gases that is emitted by the planet, uh, uh, the, the moon. And um, of course, uh, the focusing on the uh, this uh, water vapor plumes. So uh, another signature is salt. Uh, so uh, the presence of uh, sea, uh, you know, the, the, the sea water may contain salt. So that salt can come out. Because uh, if you look at the surface of uh, Europa, it's uh, a very uh, high albedo surface with the high reflectivity, but you can see a lot of uh, uh, dark areas which are actually a bit result of the ice plumes uh, giving out certain chemicals. So there is an interaction between the surface and the, uh, the expected ocean under the uh, crust of uh, Europa. So there are chemicals uh, which are going back and forth because of the ice plume activity. So we will have some spectrometers which will exactly study those uh, chemical uh, and uh, understand the composition of this. And of course, uh, as uh, James mentioned, there is a kind of uh, uh, gravitational force, uh, the, the tidal effects on the surface of the uh, Europa because of the gravity of uh, uh, Jupiter. So that impact, so the gravity, uh, the impact of gravity and uh, the, the, the kind of tidal kind of forces that are acting on the surface of uh, the moon. And this is also uh, the main reason why the uh, the ice or the, the solid water can turn into liquid and even uh, eject as volcanoes uh, in the form of water vapor. So this is basically uh, you know, the same volcanic Absolutely. activity that is uh, seen on Earth, uh, but in Earth it is uh, the molten, uh, the, the, the rocks, but it is uh, on Europa, it is the ice that is uh, molten ice in the form uh, like uh, becoming a wa liquid water and water vapor that's coming out. So these are the kind of things Primarily H2O and other kind of chemicals like the, the salt, various kinds of salts. So like you are showing you know, in the Europa surface, you are showing on the screen. So you can see all that lines and then color variation. So these are because of the various chemicals. All these are signature for uh, life forms uh, right. uh, in, the, in the sense uh, the, the different chemical combinations. So these are all very interesting areas uh, so that we can pinpoint uh, where is the exact location where there is more potential for finding out uh, the life. And then even the current mission, which is having an optional uh, landing uh, or in a future mission, you can actually study more, more of it, uh, these uh, focused areas in detail. <clears throat> Absolutely. So lots of signs there to look forward to. And also, Dr. James, now the overdose of content about uh, alien life means that every time we say that there could be an alien life, people probably would imagine those weird looking creatures just walking under uh, you know, the ice crust uh, out there uh, on, on Jupiter's moon. But help us understand what sort of alien life are we talking about here? Is this going to be potentially a simple bacteria-like organism or are we talking about something more advanced like a sea creature or a fish? 
And honestly, we don't know. Like, because we only have a single example of life in the universe, which is Earth-based life here, we don't know how common it arises, and we don't know how often it then becomes complex life, multicellular animals, plants. So we know that complex organisms with more than one cell has arisen more than once. Animals and plants did this at different times, as did fungi and different organisms. But how do you get to that step, you know, and become more complex cells? We really don't know how often that happens within the universe. So most people, I think the consensus is we're going to find simple single-celled organisms if there is any life, but we can't rule out the fact that there could be some sort of squid-like being down there. We 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 really don't know. And so I think, you know, the chances of that is much lower than finding a microbe. But again, we can't rule out bigger, more complex life. But whatever we find, it will give us more information about just how common life is. And whatever life we find, it likely evolved in a very different way to life on Earth. And so it could open up new possibilities for our understanding and also applications, what new materials could be being produced by living creatures there that we have never even thought about and, and not produced here on Earth. And so the other possibilities and applications would be, you know, wild. I think I'd be happy with the fact that uh, at least it's a creature that doesn't find its way back to Earth. I mean, I mean that that is something that we'll be hoping here. But meanwhile, uh, Jijit, we are talking about the European Clipper arriving in 2030, and uh, this is of course an interplanetary mission. It takes a very long time. How long before we actually get the data back on Earth and we analyze it and we actually know if there's something worthwhile? Yeah, that's that's again because of the distance. Uh, it, it it takes a little bit of time because uh, Jupiter is uh, much uh, uh, away from Mars and. Even the light, uh, the normal electromagnetic radiation itself take a few hours to do the back and forth. But here, what we are talking about is uh, the instruments needs to uh, create composite and image. And uh, these images are transmitted uh, pixel by pixel. So the, those kind of things will take some time. But uh, I would say like uh, uh, the, the moment we started, started the exploration, like the mapping of the surface, etc. So you can get... Uh, uh, the pictures, uh, so this will be coming in a kind of uh, uh, matter of uh, months. The compositions, etc., will come in a matter of months, and of course, there is an assembly of this uh, and further processing of these images, etc., that will uh, take place in the ground stations. So, definitely, uh, 2030, uh, uh, the, the year 2030 will be very crucial. So, in that year itself, our understanding of Europa is going to be explored uh, by multiple uh, times, like, just like how the Pluto, which was a very small disk uh, so far until uh, the the spacecrafts started orbiting and flybaying uh, around it so our understanding of the europa and the life on uh, europa that is going to be exploding on the year 2030 and uh, all the see there are nine instruments okay. so the combined effect of uh, those nine instruments the cumulative effect of the studies so those will be like uh, very uh, exponential and explosive and uh, as uh, dr james has mentioned so uh, I would also add that we are basically looking at the, the basic kind of life, like bacterial life, etc. So not to scare people that uh, it could be something like uh, even uh, big, like a kind of uh, fish. So, I mean, if it is there, then it's really exciting. But we are actually trying to get something like a bacterial life, viral life or bacterial life like that. Absolutely. Even if it's a fish, we'd hope it's not a piranha. It's, it's a very friendly one. But jokes apart, uh, uh, James, uh, you know, recently uh, we had our ISRO chairman here talk about the fact that mathematically it is quite possible that we are not alone in the universe. And he was ridiculed a lot. But when you actually look at it, it's just impossible that we are alone in the universe. Hand to heart, as someone who's worked in this field for a long time, what do you think? Do you think we are alone in this universe or do you think we should keep looking? So I really don't think that life on Earth is the only life out in the galaxy or the universe. I I, I think that the the chemistry, uh, chemical processes that cause life are very interesting and unusual, and we don't fully understand how life first arises. But there's a lot of good ideas out there about how this happened, and so we do really think that if you've got something like water energy, you know, in the form of heat, light, something like that, 
then there's the possibility for building of these complex chemicals that will then eventually become self-replicating and not in a scary sort of uh, way like a machine uprising. We're not talking about Terminator self-replicating machines, but we're talking about natural biological things. Life here on Earth probably started as these simple self-replicating machines, molecular machines made of simple chemicals and got much, much more complex. And that is what we call life now. And I don't think it's silly to think that that could have happened many, many times throughout the uh, the universe. And so there is the question about something called Fermi's paradox, which is if there's so much life out there, why haven't anybody else contacted us? There's a lot of good questions about that. Maybe life is rarer than we think it is, but we certainly, I certainly think that there is life out there, whether it's on Europa, Mars, or both. You know, that would be very interesting for us to find. And I think over the next five, 10 years, we'll be able to un- uncover a lot. Right. Uh, Dr. James, a very interesting perspective uh, you're giving there. And it's also very interesting to look at it because we have examples of places where there could have been life in the past, for example, Mars that you're talking about. And uh, we have examples of places where there could be life in the future, which is evolving into that sort of a world. But it's very interesting that we still haven't found anything, any place where there's life that's evolving parallelly to here on Earth. In fact, Jijit, before we let you go, I want to take your perspective on it. What do you think? Are we alone in the universe? I'm, I'm a little more optimistic about life because uh, there are uh, certain statistical studies. So, of course, I agree with Dr. James about uh, the actual uh, like evidences are very uh, less. Uh, but the statistically, if you look at the the life is very impossible. But there is uh, the number of uh, planets and uh, the the stars in the galaxies equally large. So you have a very rare possibility, but multiplied by the large number of uh, stars and habitable zones and uh, Earth-like planets. So one of the estimates is that. Uh, within our galaxy itself, uh, there could be um, a million uh, Earth-like habitable uh, planets. So even if you think about beyond our galaxy, then the number of habitable planets is uncountable numbers. So uh, because of the statistics, because of the number of uh, the scale of uh, the, the number of stars and uh, the habitability is something like 5%, uh, the current current statistics, is, uh, there is a, it's kind of a slight jump in the statistics. Uh, that uh, the the number of habitable uh, like planets or the the stars with hat- habitable planets have jumped uh, from two percent to some five percent. That's what I understand in theoretical. Uh, so clearly, cosmology. the possibilities that, here are endless. But yeah. again, so, hmm. I think as is the nature of uh, humankind, we will continue looking and we will continue with our explorations deep into the space as and when the technology evolves. Dr. James Lloyd, Jijit Nadumuri, Ravi, appreciate joining us on the broadcast for this very interesting chat there. The viewers, of course, would be hoping that by 2030, at least, there's some good news that comes out. And even if there's an alien life found, it is a friendly one, like we spoke here. Appreciate you joining us on the broadcast here for this discussion.